So, uh, well, I think we're pretty much all here. So I'm just going to get started with running through the contents and things like that. Um, while people make their way to some room, don't worry too much if you're catching up. We have a little while. So my name is Gabriel Dane. I Logi Anchor in Horde a fair bit uh, and have for a while. Um, and yeah, this lesson will take probably between an hour and an hour and a half, depends how many questions we have and things like that. And I'll just quickly run us through a very sparse kind of contents table uh, so you get an idea of what I'll cover. You can shout out anything else that you feel like I'm not covering if you want to know it, and I'll try to add it to the end. So firstly, I'm just going to go over just why be a Logi Anchor, which should be pretty straightforward. If you guys are here, then you might have personal answers to that question. Um, then we're going to just go over all of the different jobs and uh, jobs that the role has and put them in a hard set of priorities so that you know at any given point in a fleet um, what you should be doing if there's a problem with you know XYZ things you know we're not holding reps the cap chains in trouble and you know we need to hold position um, in regards to the fleet what's your priority what do you do first what do you fix second what do you fix third and so on um, then we're gonna do a bit of practice with positioning. We're gonna do a bit of practice with maintaining the cap chain. Uh, we might do a bit of practice with managing reps, but I don't know really how we're gonna do that. So we'll see how we go. Uh, and then at the end, we'll just do some kind of like tips and tricks uh, of logi anchoring, uh, things that will make your life easier, as well as things that aren't necessarily, you know, kind of like part of the job but that help you, such as having uh, your UI set up properly so that all of the information is focused, having good overview settings, um, learning you know, how to and when to delegate tasks and stuff like that. So that's the, that's the gist of it. Any, anything that I'm missing or any, any information that um, you guys need before we get started? Feel free to interrupt me, ask questions at any point, by the way. Uh, we are f there's few enough of us that I think we don't need to keep it too formal. Um, so yeah, do so if you feel like it. So the first thing is why be a logi anchor, and I think it's pretty straightforward for me. There's really no question. I think logi anchoring is one of the funnest things that you can do in the game, uh, just because there's constant action from the moment that a fleet gets pinged. You know, you are making sure that all the logi ships are fit properly, that they are in the cap chain, that they're on comms, that they uh, know how to fly their ship. You know, for a lot of people, you'll be their teacher on how to fly logi. So you want to explain the cap chain to them, you want to explain broadcast, you want to make sure that they've got the broadcast setting right. So from the very moment that you're even forming up all through the fleet in, you know, positioning, communicating, managing reps, managing the cap chain, um, and of course, you know, applying reps yourself all the way to the end of the fleet, there's always something for you to do. So I, I find that that's the most fun that you can really have. I hate just AFK burning to a destination and then pressing F1 a bunch of times and then I'm done. That's, that seems pretty boring. Um, but obviously it, it can also have a huge effect on the fight, right? So it's not just about the fun that you have, but the fact that a good logi anchor can make or break a fight. Um, being able to apply reps and save your ships is a huge determiner of the success of a fight, right? Losing fewer ships than the hostiles lose is, is a huge sign that you're doing well and, and having a good logi anchor can go a huge way towards that. And finally, it teaches you a ton of tra transferable skills. So if you ever wanted to FC, for example, or if, if, if you wanted to get better at FCing, um, I think logi anchoring is a great way to practice your skills, learn new ones, um, and um, also it'll give you a ton of skills that you'll use elsewhere in, in EVE. So that's why I reckon it's, um, it's a great idea to logi anchor. Obviously, also people will love you, right? Um, Everyone loves their logi, especially when the, it saves them their ship. Um, and as an alliance, just in general, like we need good logi anchors and FCs will, you know, love that you step up for it and that you that you logi anchor their fleets. Any questions about that? Anyone want to add anything to that? Sweet. Yeah, I think if you're all here, it's because you already know why you want to be a logi anchor. So I might just move right into what I see as the four jobs of the logi anchor. You can say there's a fifth, but 
four jobs. So maybe let's do it interactively seeing as there's so few of us. So what do you reckon are some of the jobs that the Lodge Anchor has to do in a fleet? Just shout them out, put them in the fleet chat, whatever you want. Well, obviously positioning. Yep, positioning's one. Excellent. What else? Communicating with the FC. Yes, communicating with the FC. And not only the FC, but also your Logi Wing and also the fleet in general in some situations. And two more. Maintaining the cap chain. Maintaining the cap chain. Are you guys like reading my spreadsheet or something? Like what's going on? And one more. Managing reps. So I would say that this is probably uh, one that a lot of people might not be able to do as you're starting out because communicating with the FC, maintaining the cap chain and positioning the Logi Wing in itself is a huge job. Uh, if you, on top of that you can manage reps, call heat and things like that, then all the better. So I would add it as the fifth job. Um, and importantly, I would say, you know, your fifth job as a Logi Anchor, if you are able to do the first four and you have some extra attention that you can dedicate to it, is to actually apply reps yourself, but it's a far far less a priority than everything else. Um, primarily as a Logi Anchor, what you're doing is communicating with the FC, maintaining the cap chain, positioning the Logi Wing, and if you can, managing reps. If you actually manage to apply some reps yourself, it, that's just bonus. And now that we know what the jobs are, so those four jobs, maintaining the cap chain, positioning the Logi Wing, managing reps and communication, how would you guys prioritize it? What do you think is your number one priority at all times from the first second to the last second of a fleet? Managing cap. I wouldn't say so. Any other guesses? Positioning properly. Positioning, positioning. Nope. I don't think so, anyway. Communication. Yeah, yes, 100%. So, communication with the FC, with the Logi Wing, and with the rest of the fleet is, I, in my opinion, far and away the highest priority as Logi Anchor. Um, and, and the thing is that if you are doing your job maintaining the cap chain and positioning the Logi Wing and managing reps correctly, but the FC doesn't know about it, then you've lost, you know, 50% of your ability as a fleet. Um, because say, for example, that you're taking away 30 seconds to reposition the Logi when you got boosted, or um, re-establishing the cap chain if people are getting heavily ECM'd and things like that. The fact that the FC for those 30 seconds doesn't know that his fleet or their fleet is not going to be taking reps puts you at a huge disadvantage, right? You're going to be losing more ships. Potentially, the FC is going to be, you know, continuing to engage in a way that they shouldn't, and so on. Um, so, I would say the first thing that should be in your mind is: is this thing that is happening right now something that I should tell the FC? If you you know, once you've decided what you need to do in terms of communication, then you can move on to actually fixing the problem. Okay, so first priority is communication. What's the second one then? Managing reps. I wouldn't say so. I'd say maintaining the cap chain is the number two priority. So maintaining the cap chain um, is the lifeblood of the Logi fleet, right? If you if you don't maintain the cap chain, then your Logi pilots won't be able to apply reps, which means that you can't do your job. Now, say that uh, say that you're not positioning the Logi wing at all, right? You are keeping at range 1,000 on the FC for whatever reason. As long as the cap chain is up, you can still apply reps. You can still save ships. You might not do it as effectively, but you're still going to save ships. Whereas if you are positioning correctly, but all of your logi is muted out because the cap chain is dead, then you're going to give reps for 10 seconds and then everyone's going to die. So uh, maintaining the cap chain definitely number two priority. As soon as that's broken, that, that needs to be your second priority. So your first priority is letting the FC know we're having problems with the cap chain, we're fixing it, and then you actually go on to fix it. And the third priority then, there's not many left, so I'll just say it, is positioning the Logi Wing. Um, once you've communicated, once you've uh, established a cap chain, then you go on to actually put yourself in the optimal position in space in regards to the fleet and the hostiles. 
And then finally, I would say if you've done those three things and you still have some extra attention to give, um, locking up broadcasts, managing reps, and so on uh, would be the fourth priority, with a distant fifth being actually applying reps yourself. Um, so does that kind of make sense? Any questions about that? One question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So Jordan and Token, Jordan, go first. So on land, yeah. if say, uh, is the first priority to get the cap chain up or to apply reps? Well, see, I, I take this list of priorities in, in a very literal sense. So when the first priority for me when I land on a grid is communication. So who am I communicating with in this particular case? Not the FC, there's not much to say yet, but the Logi wing, right? So what I'll be doing is communicating with them that they need to um, anchor up, that they need to lock up their buddy, and they need to give them cap. And I'll do that like really slowly and very clearly because if we don't get those two steps right, because they're the number two and number three priority, then we can't get the fourth priority right, which is managing reps. So first priority communication, letting your logic wing uh, know to lock up your cap buddy, give him cap, and then keep it range on Gabriel Dane or whatever your name is, um, 1,000. Problems on one cycle, whatever it is, right? You don't, you don't want to get into a situation where everyone is scrambling to lock broadcasts and applying reps and then two minutes later into the fight, half of your logi wing is 60 kilometers away because they didn't anchor up or you know half of your logi wing is not cap chained properly so you're all dead now. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So if you've ever flown with me, you might have actually heard me say like very, very slowly, you know, and very clearly, you know, don't look at broadcasts. First thing that you're going to do on land is you're going to lock up your buddy, you're going to give him cap, then you're going to keep at range, Gabriel Dan 1000, you're going to turn prop mod on. Okay, everyone lock up their buddy, everyone give them cap, anchor up on me now. Okay, now lock up blah 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 broadcast. Lock up so and so broadcast. Uh, it's just getting those priorities in so important. Um, Token, you had a question as well? Isn't it also Luchi who. Uh uh, maintains no overview of if they're holding the fleet or not. The FTs often ask Logi if if we are holding or not, instead of looking at their own uh, overview. Yeah, absolutely. So what I w what I include in communication with the FC and the fleet, uh, which is that the absolute highest priority is information about whether the fleet is holding, if they're not holding, if we're losing ships, and things like that. So yes, giving information about the state of Logi is, is your biggest priority as Logi Anchor, I would say. Um, which takes us neatly into the next thing, uh, which is communication with the FC and the fleet, unless anyone has any questions about those four jobs and the priorities. No, I think that makes sense. Sweet. OK, so um, there's, there's kind of four things that I've, I, I mean, it, it's kind of hazy to try to put category, categories on this, but um, I tried to put the types of communication that you're going to do into kind of four categories, right? Um, the first one and probably the most important one is uh, what you communicate when a fleet member dies, right? So like you were just saying, Token, um, if we lose a ship, particularly ships like mainline DPS ships, um, support ships like recons, links, other logi and things like that, um, or if we're losing uh, a ton of ships, even if you're not able to really tell what they are or how they died or anything like that, it's really important to communicate that to, F to the FC. Um, obviously, if we're losing ships, that could be an indication that we need to disengage um, and the FC needs that information in order to make that call. Having said that though, it could very well be that we're trading super favorably and that the FC says, like, don't worry about what's being killed, we're trading great, just don't worry about it, and, and you'll adjust your communications as you go. But I would say by default, uh, if we're losing ships, I will always communicate uh, when we lose a mainline or a support ship, what ship they are and how they died. And I think that this is something that sometimes is forgotten. Um, if you say, you know, we lost one hurricane, that gives some level of information that's still useful. But if you say, we lost a hurricane because of a late broadcast, that's different. Or 
because you know it might just mean that the FC needs to remind people be looking at your overview as soon as you get yellow boxed broadcast um, and but we're otherwise in a really good position to to fight this fleet however say that we lost a hurricane because they got Alfred you know or because we're just not holding reps then that's a different set of information that the FC gets um, and in that case it means you know we are going to be losing ships continuously it's not just down to people broadcasting properly uh, we're just going to continue to lose canes and the FC has to make a call do they want to continue to engage on those terms or do they want to disengage so any questions about that one communicating with them when a fleet member dies and and how you say it yeah oh, I've got a question mm -hmm. uh, in uh, I've noticed a lot in the current sort of scheme of things we use hurricanes or ferroxes and macarials and stuff like that and yep. a lot of it is based on trying to volley through lodgy reps yep. uh, does it still occur where reps sort of get overtaken by dps like is applied dps still a thing or is it more about being able to volley ships alpha alpha is definitely in the meta right now so being able to volley the hostile fleet uh, so not, definitely with hurricanes, maelstroms, um, tempests, macarials, there's lots of artillery uh, fleets at the moment where, yes, as Logi, if, if the hostile fleet has a critical mass of ships that they can volley any of the ships in your fleet, then you're not really going to be doing that much, you know, uh, because you just can't apply reps quickly enough to be able to save ships. Um, but there are still tons of doctrines that are in the meta um, uh, definitely more than half let's say that uh, don't rely purely on on alpha um, you know ferroxes are kind of half alpha half dps in some cases um, definitely there's a lot of like auto cannon uh, uh, fleets you know any of those artillery ones that i mentioned hurricanes um, macarials for example there's auto cannon versions of that which has very low alpha but high dps so um that that's one of the things that you might want to be conscious of as you engage another fleet you know are we going to be seeing high alpha damage but low dps or the other way around and adjust appropriately um definitely though if you're up against an alpha fleet and your ships are getting volleyed that's really important to be able to say to the fc um not just that we lost the ship but the fact that we lost it by being volleyed because that tells the fc we're going to be we're going to be losing a ship every 20 seconds let's say you know if you're going up against max cool thank you yeah no drums any other questions about communicating when a fleet member dies yeah so you also have to know at least as much as the fc about all of our doctrines or the doctrines you're about the anchoring yeah look I, I would i would be careful to say that you need to know this or you need to know that i think ultimately you're able to do the job of a logi anchor with knowledge of you know how to position the fleet when to communicate with the fc and how to manage a cap chain and then questions about the meta are secondary i agree that it oh, helps yeah, you but like, yeah more like I, you need mm -hmm. you, yeah but you need to know all of the roles in the fleet and the importance of the different roles and which reps to prioritize and whatnot yeah I, I i take that point that say for example you you get four quick broadcasts right and it's three hurricanes and a hugan you need to lock the hugan and make sure that it's not dying uh, because a hugan is kind of like pound for pound worth so much more to the fleet than a single hurricane so I, I do take that point having said that though like if you don't know all the ships if you don't know all the metas don't feel like you can't lodge anchor you can still do it um, it's just beneficial if you learn what the different ships are and so on the best thing I suppose is always just know what you're uh, flying so know, know the optimal of your Osprey or whatever you're flying Basilisk Scimitar just know what the optimals are uh, so that you can keep that in your mind because staying in the optimal is the most important part of that yeah so we'll go over positioning and, and a few different ways <laughs> to do that a little bit later so i might move on to the the f other few things that i reckon uh every logi needs to know how to communicate and that's 
threads to the cap chain and threads to your positioning. Um, so any time that, say, Logi is being ECM'd, Logi is being neutered, um, or Logi is dying, and so you're too busy re-establishing the cap chain to apply full reps, it's really important that you let the FC know uh, so that they understand they're not going to be getting reps for the time being. That might mean they want to pull range, they want to disengage for a bit, they want to ping out, you know, there's a few things that they can do, uh, but without the information that Logi is preoccupied with the cap chain or preoccupied with repositioning because you got boosted or because you're being webbed or whatever, they can't make those decisions. So uh, it's pretty straightforward, you know, if you hear from your Logi that they're currently jammed or if they're being neutered out, just shout out to command, Logi's getting ECM'd, fixing the cap chain, or you know they're newly new, they're using Logi. Uh, you may not get reps, that kind of thing. Just so people know what to expect. Any questions about that one? Is it too late to join up here, guys? No, no, join up. Just come in and I'll spray to seven RM. Can you repeat some of the commands that when you're dying, what would you say to your UFC? When when you as Logi anchor are dying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, definitely, you, if you if you die as a logi anchor, you want to shout that and you want to say, you know, we lost the logi anchor, um, and just tell them that we're reorganizing ourselves. But then, you know, your job doesn't end there. You need to continue to command the logi wing until a new logi anchor is set up. So in the time being, you'll want to tell your logi wing to, um, to firstly to get someone to step up. But if someone doesn't step up immediately, then you need to get them to re-anchor on the FC so that they don't drift off into space um, because it's still anchored on you they, you want to make them readjust the cap chain and, and 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 so on so that they can still continue to apply reps and then once once they're re-anchored on the fc once their cap chain is fixed then you can bust their balls about getting a logi anchor but i would say you know like if someone doesn't step up in the first kind of like 10 to 15 seconds just get them to anchor on the FC, re-establish cap chain, and um, and then worry about replacing yourself. Because otherwise, it's a situation yeah. where it goes from just losing one logi to potentially losing all logi because they they're just headless chickens, you know. No, oh, I get that. I'm yeah. Down or something like that. Sorry, I just missed half of what you said there. The first half of your sentence. Just asking for the basic comments. Yeah, I mean, you really just want to say shout out to FC, Logi Anchor is down, reorganizing Logi Wing. You know, that, that should be enough. That'll mean to most FCs that their fleet's not going to be doing reps, that there's a serious problem with Logi and that it's getting sorted, and just go from there, really. It's just a battle, very chaotic place, you know. Yeah, and it gets look, very I, confusing. I, I, I take the point that, you know, sometimes people are scared to shout out to the FC because, um, you know, there's lots going on and then, then they're not pausing or anything, but uh, the ability to not lose ships is the second most important thing to the ability to kill hostile ships. So if we're having serious trouble with the ability to save ships, then the FC needs to know, you know, like that's 50% of the fight. Um, so have the confidence to shout up to command anytime that you feel the FC needs information. Don't waffle on, don't say, hey, FC, we're having a little bit of trouble because the hostile ships might potentially seem to be ECMing us. You know, we're just gonna be taking a little bit to fix the cap chain. Just make it clear, make it concise, but do it, do it, because um, you, you're otherwise um, affecting the, the, the fleet detrimentally. Logi anchor down is all you really need to say. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, and in terms of communication, the last thing that I think is really important to uh, to remember to communicate, particularly towards the start of a fight, is if everything's going great. Um, a, a, an FC won't generally know that they are just massacring the the other fleet until the Logi wing says, you know, we're holding fine. And that's really all that you need to say. But you know, it's 30 seconds, a minute into the fight, and we haven't lost anything, and we're holding reps. That's really important information for the FC to know. And all that you really need to say is shout up and say Logi's holding fine FC, and that that means to them, you know, go to town. 
um, engage fully, maximize your damage, etc., etc. So that's communication uh, in a nutshell. But any questions about that, about what to say to the FC, how to say it, things like that? Sweet. If I might add a little mm -hmm. thing. When communicating to the FC, it's always important to not panic when the first, like the first three ships or something that maybe broadcast to the first two, uh, that if they die, that you immediately shout, we're not holding. Because oftentimes, when a fleet first lands, people themselves are setting up their ships, are um, maybe not completely focused, and thus you will get the first uh, late broadcast. You will get people completely alpha off because you're still setting up cap chain. So don't be uh, immediately like, like, oh no, we're not holding. Use, use maybe the first 30 seconds to uh, uh, assess what is actually going on before immediately saying, all right, we're not holding or that. Yeah, totally, totally agree. I had it on my notes actually, and even the same measure I was going to say, wait 30 seconds and then start worrying about whether you're holding or not. All right, if there's no more questions about communication, although, you know, like if you think of something during the lesson and you ask it later, no big deal. Um, but if there's no more questions about communication now, I might just move on to positioning. So I think uh, let's undock now so we can try a few different ways to position the logic wing. So everyone undock, undock, undock from 7RM and align up. So firstly, everyone should know what the optimal is on your reps in an Osprey. Someone tell me. 30k. 30k, yeah. So 29-ish k's, depending on what reps you have and so on, but basically 30 k's. Um, and whenever you, well, all the time, basically, you should try to maintain that distance or near to that distance to the main fleet, right? Um, the the reason that we do that instead of just anchoring on the DPS anchor is that it mitigates damage from incoming fleets. Um, it mitigates e war from incoming from from hostile fleets, uh, and and generally makes logi way more survivable than if you were sitting in the main ball. Right? Um, say for example for a hurricane fleet, uh, if 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 you're going up against uh, another hurricane fleet or Ferox's or whatever generally you'll be sitting at the main fleets will be sitting at max dps range from each other right so if you if the logi wing is 30k's out that'll put them into the fall off range so you're going to be taking much less damage that's that's the general right. idea any what questions about channel are we using right now oh uh, we, we don't need to worry too much about the cap chain it's not it's not like we're going to be applying reps here uh, we're mostly just going to be practicing moving around um, now we're not going to have an anchor obviously because the idea here is to have you guys learn how to manually control your ship. So there's three main ways. There's Q clicking, there's double clicking, and there's keeping at range. And um, they're used at different times for different purposes. Um, and you know, different people have different preferences, but definitely Q clicking and double clicking, I would say are probably the two that you want to learn. Keeping at range, you only use in emergencies and very limited situations, and it's trivial. You just keep a range at a particular range to the FC. So let's practice now without any kind of theory or anything. Um, you guys keeping at, uh, so maintaining optimal range from me towards the sun, right? So you wanna burn away from me towards the sun and maintain your optimal using whatever method you guys want. Yep, looking good. See a few people with prop mods off. Darianne, you, in, a, in a situation where you're anchoring up on landing on a grid and everyone's balled up, you'll want to turn your problem on a couple of times generally, just to get at that optimal. 
So yeah, I see a few guys that are actually going way beyond the range. So what probably happened there is instead of turning your prom mod off um, ahead of getting to your optimal, you turn it off once you were at 30k. So now I see you're at 46k, 41k, and and that's too far, right? So you're you're going to be losing um, a ton of your reps, and in a situation where we're close to not holding ships are going to be dying so it's really important to not go um, out of position I see some people at 50k now that's that's not great and the thing is because the DPS anchor is most of the time going to be moving you're you're not going to just quickly reposition down to 30k that 50k if the FC starts burning away from you it's going to turn into 60 70 maybe and and then your reps are basically not applying at all uh, the Osprey of Nino is way, way out. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, sorry, I was okay. That's all good. Yeah. Oh. And and Token in the Augura, um, also the same thing. So you you burnt out and, and then you didn't made, make sure that you were in the right place. Maybe you got bumped, I don't know. Everyone else seems to be roughly, roughly in the right direction, which is good. So maybe I'll go over the first method the one that I use for positioning the logi wing positioning yourself and therefore the logi wing 90% uh, of the time which is Q clicking now everyone should be familiar with this but basically what you do is you hold down Q on your keyboard then you uh, you oh, sorry first of all turn on your tactical overlay so you can press ctrl D or go down to your uh, HUD and on the left side you'll see tactical overlay to make sure that is on yeah, no worries, token. Um, then you will pre hold down Q on your keyboard and you'll see a blue line connecting your ship to your mouse, to your pointer, right? So the first click that you make is going to select your direction on the horizontal plane. So everyone try that now. And then you'll be able to move your mouse up and down to select your inclination, right? So. Um, everyone just select a random direction now to see how that works so hold Q click once to select movement of the horizontal plane and then select an inclination up or down and maybe turn problem mode on one cycle so you can get some distance so I can see where you're going so is anyone not able to get this anyone wondering what the hell I'm talking about not able to use the click Q click method I admittedly never knew about this, so this is good information. <laughs> yeah. So look, I, I really like this method because it gives you, I would say, the most control over where you move. Um, it has an end point, so unlike double-clicking, you're not going to endlessly burn out of range. Um, and it gives you control over distance, right? So when you're initially anchoring up, for example, right, and you want to burn to your optimal from the FC, you can select, you can line up your mouse on the horizontal plane on the line that says 30 or 20 or 25, whatever, and select that distance, and you know that you're going to go 30k away from where the FC initially was, and then they're going to stop, right? Um, the downside of the Q clicking is that it probably requires like the most situa situational awareness um, in that you need to know the kind of 3D layout of the field and also that it requires constant readjustment, right? So you, you can't just select an align, double click and go forever. Um, you have to constantly be adjusting where you're cl Q clicking because once you reach the Desto, you stop, your ship stops, right? What about during the lag, when there's like 500 people on a uh, on grid? Um, well, I mean, it really depends on your computer. I used to have real trouble with that because my computer was ratchet, so um, I I would try to Q-click as best as I could, but sometimes you'd have to just kind of double, double click, set and forget. But but I think, really, if you're able to Q-click, then I would, I would use this. Also, in a situation where there's tie-dye, um, you generally have more time to make your decisions and to make your movements rather than less time because everything's happening so slowly. So even though it's laggy, you have the extra time to like position it properly, move, look at the grid, etc. Do you use a special uh, overview? 
Um, I'll go over the overview towards the end. I, I do, but I don't think it's super critical. All right, so I'm going to do something tricky. I'm going to orbit this can, and you guys are going to Q click so that you stay in your optimal and you stay um, in the optimal position in the fleet. So again, having the cargo container as far away from you as you can, keeping me between the cargo container and you, and maintaining your optimal using the Q-click method. I'm going to turn prop mode on once to get a little bit of uh, range from you guys, and then I'll turn it off. Good, everyone's burning in the right direction at least. It's a good sign. See, I see some of you that are burning towards me, right? So for example, Darian. So what you're doing is kind of approaching me, right? Now, uh, if you look at, if you look from a bird's eye view right now, you are, you are maintaining range from me somewhat, but the thing is you're getting closer and closer to the cargo container, right? Because the arc that you're drawing is in a kind of straight line towards me which gets you closer to the cargo container. So that puts you in danger, that puts the logic wing in danger. What you want to do more is maintain the range from me in an arc, in a circular kind of shape, so that you're always at maximum range from the cargo container. Yeah, yeah, you've got it now, that's great. You guys did really good, I like, I like where you are now. You burn prop mod and then you turn prop mods off once I slowed down to maintain your optimal. Let's look at ranges. Uh, I see one at 39, so you're burning out a little bit. 31, 32, yep, yeah, everyone else is pretty good. How is, how is that? I'm still a little more comfortable as double clicking, but I'm getting the, the, getting the hang of Q clicking. Okay, well let's try that one then, because I mean that's the next one that you have in your arsenal. So double clicking is uh, the other alternative. I'm not great at it, so uh, I can't teach you, uh, you know, how to do it perfectly, but sometimes it's it's the way to go and some people are super comfortable with it and they're able to use it to great effect. So what you do in order to double click is you literally double click in space and it'll burn you in a straight direction towards where you clicked, right? So I want you guys to select my ship, so select my Osprey, and then zoom in on your own ship and you'll see two lines if you have the tactical over overlay turned on. You'll see a solid blue line coming out of your ship that shows your direction and then you'll see a pulsing blue line that comes out of your ship, probably a shorter line, and that shows my direction, right? So say that I change direction now you should see my little arrow move downwards. Did everyone see that? Yep. Yeah. Sweet. So this is a great way to be able to know where to double click. So say for example that I was burning in a straight line. I'm burning in a straight line now, let's say. I'm gonna change directions again so you don't have to reposition. And you wanted to uh, uh, burn in the same direction as me, right? Um, because I'm aligned out to something or because you want to go on a parallel line to a hostile fleet or whatever, what you can do is select my ship, then look where the arrow is, and then double click in space in the same direction as that arrow. You might have to line up your ship so that it's kind of in a straight line from where you're looking, it's kind of tricky, I find it tricky, and then double click in space. So everyone try that now, try to match my align. So I think something makes it easier if I actually click to look at you, I can you know, zoom in on you and then just line my camera up and do that too. I don't have to worry about referencing where I'm at. Yeah, that could also work. I, I prefer using the little arrow because looking at ships and then looking back at ships I find annoying. But you know, a lot of, a lot of positioning is down to what the individual prefers. So, yeah. Uh, I see a lot of you that have got it pretty spot on. Yeah, looking good. Did anyone have any major issues with that one? Uh, you know, don't know what you're doing, or you have any huge questions about how to double click to keep the align? You can also double click just to select a direction, right? So you could 
orbit me in this or, or, or keep a range at me in the same way that you do with Q clicking by double clicking um, and it's just a matter of you know picking the point in space where you want to burn to or towards in order to um, to maintain your position um, I, I find it tricky but some people don't so you, you'll want to try both see what you're comfortable with um, the precision uh, sorry the pros with this one is that it's got relatively good precision you you go exactly where you want to go uh, it is independent of the FC movement so you, you're not keeping at range or orbiting so you're not going to like accidentally burn into the, the hostile fleet and it doesn't require adjustments right so say that the FC is just burning in a straight line uh, you can do the same and you, you don't need to constantly readjust it like you do with the Q clicking you can kind of set and forget it as long as the FC doesn't change their direction um, and some of the cons is that I find it finicky to get it right um, it is liable to put you out of position or out of optimal if you don't pay attention to it um, and it doesn't provide range or kind of distance sensitivity so I I would say this is bad for the initial anchoring because you double click in space and then you have to constantly be checking your range to the FC um, in order to stop your ship right whereas with Q clicking you can select 30 or 25 and you know that as soon as you get to that range you're gonna stop so any questions about double clicking okay and the last one is keeping out range now keeping out range I would say is not a method of positioning it is only a fallback if one of two things happen one you are unable for whatever reason to manually pilot and that could be because there's just too much shit going on and you need to pay attention to let's say fixing, fixing the cap chain and that's totally fine you know like that's a higher priority than positioning in my mind so keep at range on the FC fix the cap chain and then reposition properly and the other situation where I would say keep at range is acceptable is if there is just no threat to your fleet right you're alone in system you're bashing a structure and you don't want to have to like have Korean style APM to stay in position whatever just keep at range no big deal uh, and this one's pretty straightforward right so all that you need to do is right click on me or radial menu on me and select a keep out range and and say that you're busy fixing the cap chain and you can't anchor up properly you'll make it a short range so that you don't accidentally burn into the hostile fleet or whatever if you're bashing a structure and you just want to stay relatively in your optimal then you can make it 25 or 30 and that's fine so everyone go ahead and like say keep it range 25 on me and and burn your prop mods just so you know how to I'm, I'm sure that you've all done it but let's just do it just in case any questions about keep it range when you might use it when you might not so okay uh, basically don't use it unless you absolutely have to yeah you have to be on the right side to use it yeah so there is one situation where I found this can actually be interesting and it's where you so you say that you land on a grid with a hostile force and you immediately uh, align back to where you came from which happens often right? like you'll get an align you'll be aligned out burning prob mod um, as you try to pop off ships but you're all ready to warp in that case it can be useful to uh, do the initial anchoring with your Q click and then keep at range on the FC and generally it'll keep you in a straight line with the FC um, but you do need to monitor it All right. I think we're good with the positioning now in terms of where to position your fleet not just how to but where um, it's most of the time pretty straightforward you want to draw a parallel or a straight line between the hostile fleet your fleet and the logi wing and you want to make the distance between your fleet and the logi wing your optimal range now I generally go for the optimal range minus 5k in my opinion it's better to be able to fly apply full reps even if I'm 
not at the absolute maximum range from the hostile fleet that I could be than to be too safe and potentially lose ships because our reps aren't applying fully. It's a judgment call though, you know, you, you'll have to make it for yourself. If Lodge is being primaried and you're losing Lodge, maybe pull a little bit more range, you know. It's, uh, it's really a situational thing. All right, I might move on from positioning on to maintaining the cap chain unless there's any questions about positioning. Okay, so let's move on to managing the cap chain, uh, which is pretty straightforward. So maintaining the cap chain is your number two priority at all times. Um, and there's basically three things that can happen that lead to you having to take your attention uh, slightly away from positioning and from managing reps towards fixing the cap chain. Um, the first one is if a logic ship dies, right? So can anyone tell me what is meant to happen when we lose a logic ship? You're supposed to drop the uh, drop out of channel. Whoever dies is supposed to drop out of the T1 cap chain channel and then whoever is directly above them is supposed to pick up the next person in line. Yep, spot on. Um, I would add to that 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 person should announce it on comms and that they should minus one from the cap chain channel um, so that it's explicitly clear that they died and that they're leaving. Um, so they should announce it on comms that they're dead, say their name on comms, right? Minus one in cap chain and then leave the channel. Now, as Logi Anchor, it's your job to make sure that that adjustment in the cap chain happens smoothly, right? So you, what I do is I confirm the character name, remind them to leave the channel, and then announce the changes to the cap buddies on comms, right? So I would have their cap chain open. Um, I would say, I would look at where the guy was and then look at the person above them and say, you know, Alice, um, you're now, your cap buddy is now Charlie, lock up Charlie, give them cap. And then getting confirmation from Charlie verbally that they're getting cap. Um, it's not enough just to say what needs to happen. Yeah, that's all right, Gorgoth. Uh, it's not enough to just, just say what needs to happen. It's your job to make sure that it actually happens. Uh, it's it's super common that someone dies and then five minutes later, the poor guy, the poor guy that doesn't have a cap buddy anymore is screaming that they're not getting cap and suddenly they can't give cap anymore. So you have to fix two cap buddies, you know? So you want to get it right the first time. Say, Alice, you're now giving cap to Charlie. Lock him, now, lock him up now. Give him cap now. Charlie, are you all good? Great, and then you go back to managing your reps and positioning and so on. So does that all make sense? Yeah. Sweet. The next thing that can happen is that Logi is jammed, right? So it happens all the time. We have proliferation of ECM drones. There's always some ECM in every you know medium to large size fleet. Um, and in this case, what is the Logi pilot meant to do when they get jammed? Oh, the comms that they're jammed. Yep. So you announce it on comms. Do they leave the captain channel? No. Negative. No. They don't leave the captain channel because they're still in the captain. They just can't give caps cap uh, cap transfers right now. So you want them in the captain, but you want them to write that they're jammed in the captain channel, right? So the pilot should announce it on comms using the whisper key, using uh, their character name that they're jammed. They should write jammed in the captain channel. Um, and that's it. And then as soon as they're no longer jammed, they should announce it again and they should write no longer jammed in the cap chain channel. That's so that we can keep track of who's jammed, who's not jammed and so on. And your job as Logi Anchor is the same as if someone dies. So you need to confirm their character name, remind them to write in a cap chain channel and then fix the cap chain actively. So you'll say, Alice, you're now skipping Bob until he's unjammed. Lock up Charlie now, give him cap. Charlie, are you getting cap, right? And then when the guy gets unjammed, you go, Alice, Bob is unjammed, you can give him cap now. Um, and conf unconfirmed from Bob that he's getting cap. That all good? Sweet. And if at all possible, <laughs> does it make it easier for, for you as Logi Anchor if we were to say, 
Okay, Taiho is jammed. Uh, Rogue X, would you send Cap to token for a little bit? Yeah, yeah, totally. So, like, uh, as a Logi pilot, you you can take the initiative and just say what the Logi anchor should say anyway. Um, that's that's great. It just saves them having to pay even more attention to to more things. Um, I'm going to fleet warpers now, by the way, so I can reship into a scorpion, and we're going to try ECMing you guys while you capturing up. Um, and in the meantime, what we're going to be talking about is uh, being neutered, right? So another thing that can happen that disturbs the cap chain is if we have a Logi ship or a multiple Logi ships being neutered. Now, what should happen in this situation, do you reckon? What does the Logi pilot that's being neutered need to say? The same thing that he said. Yeah, the one thing is that you don't, just because you're getting neutered, doesn't immediately mean that you need to leave the cap chain, right? So you need to announce it on comms, and that's it. Maybe you you will ask people to put it on cap chain channels so that you can, you know, remind yourself uh, with text who's being neutered. But in a lot of cases, nudes won't push through the cap chain, so it's not something that you need to readjust the cap chain for. However, if someone's neutered dry and they can no longer cap, give cap to their buddy, then in that situation, yes, you treat it just like if that person was being jammed. You skip them. You say, Alice, you got to skip Bob. Alice, you're going to lock up Charlie. You're going to give him cap. Just as if that person was being jammed. Quick question on that. If, mm -hmm. you're, if you're just the standard Logi pilot and you're the one being neutered, what's more important, maintaining the cap chain? Or giving the reps, or is that a judgment call based on the situation? Your re giving the reps change. is the last priority that you have as Logianka. So the the maintaining the cap chain is always going to be more important than you specifically giving reps, but also for every other logic ship as well. Like if we if we don't have the cap chain set up, and people are still giving reps, what's going to happen is we're going to save a couple of ships now. And then in 20 seconds, everyone's going to die. <laughs> Whereas if you take all of your attention away from giving reps towards fixing the cap chain, we're going to lose a couple of ships now because we're not applying reps, but then we're going to save people for the rest of the fleet. So it's just a question of kind of like opportunity costs and cost benefit analysis that maintaining the cap chain kind of pound for pound is always going to benefit you more than giving reps. All right. Okay, so if you're under mm -hmm. some new pressure, drop your reps, drop your hardeners. Totally. I wouldn't, I wouldn't drop your capture. hardeners necessarily. If you can keep your hardeners on, all the better, because nudes generally are used as a way to turn off your hardeners. So it, it's kind of being done in preparation for them primering you. So don't turn off your hardeners. But if you if, if not using two reppers means that you're still cap stable with the cap chain, then definitely don't give two reps. You know, like it's so much more important to maintain the cap chain. Yep. All right, any questions about how to fix the how to fix the cap chain, uh, about ECMing, about neuting or anything like that? No, that all seems pretty straightforward. Sorry. A quick question with nuding, and maybe it's been solved since void bombs aren't as much of a problem on citadels, but like a month ago I was helping a, a VG squad that was just void bombed to hell and everyone had no cap. What What's the go-to in that scenario? Yeah, that's really tricky. So void bombs aren't going to be an issue coming up soon. Um, that they're either being like nerfed to shit or removed, I can't remember. But basically, if the entire Logi wing is neutered, you need to call it out because it's the same as not having a Logi wing, right? Um, so you need to yell out to FC, all of Logi is neutered, we can't give reps, and then like try your best to to get it back up, you know, like inject cap or whatever, but in a lot of cases, you just won't be able to. So, yeah, right. So what just what just happened with our positioning? I want to know. I want to know what happened. You have JD away. I am JD away. Now, obviously, this is not going to happen in a fleet. If if, you, if your FC is MJ doing away, then your FC is a dickhead. But what could happen is that you get booshed. Boosh. So uh, in a lot of cases, either the FC or you or 
some bunch of people are going to get pushed uh, away. So in that case, that's another thing that I would call out. I would say, you know, Logi Win got pushed, repositioning, and then your priority after you communicated is to reposition. So I see some of you are repositioning already. That's really good. I want the rest of you to reposition as well. Problem not on. We have like a, a fellow Stratios uh, joining us. Yeah, I'm just listening to the comms. That's Excellent really class. Good. Do you want an invite to the fleet, mate? No, I'm fine, FC. I'm just okay. carrying your classes. Very nice. <laughs> no worries. You're welcome. Let right, me know so you help doing anything you guys... like muting somebody. <laughs> yeah, good, good one. Uh, so you got mutes on that thing? You guys, uh, you guys did the right thing. The first, the first guys that repositioned, you all did the right thing, except for stopping your ship. So I'm going 100 meters a second, which is basically nothing compared to what the Ospreys can do. And see how you, almost all of you, overshot me. So that's because you were burning a prom mod all of the time, and you weren't cognizant of the range. So you're now closer to the hostile fleet than I am, which is a bad, bad position to be in. Um, although, to be fair to you guys, because this is not a perfect analogy to an MJD, you know, I'm talking about the situation in which Logi was MJD'd away, um, and you have to burn back to your original position. If this was a situation where the FC had been boosted completely out of position, then yeah, that, that's fair enough. That, that just completely changes the situation. You might want to burn around me or whatever, but... In most cases, it'll be Logia that gets boosted, and so you just want to like burn back into your original position as quickly as possible. Okay, so that's positioning pretty much covered, maintaining the cap chain pretty much covered. Um, can anyone think of something that I might have forgotten from positioning, communication, or maintaining the cap chain? Uh, dealing with a bomb run? Uh, yeah, so bomb runs. Uh, but basically all that you really got to do is call it out when you see it, right? So in all of your overview settings, you should have bombs turned on. You should see it. It should be right at the top because it'll be at a short range. And you just need to call it, you know, bomb, everyone turn your micro warp drives off, hardeners on, over here, hardeners maybe, particularly if you had your um, your prop mods on. And that's, and that's basically it. You know, if you get a proper bomb run on you, you're just going to die and there's not much you can do there. Actually, one thing that I did forget is talking about bushes. One of the things that you can do uh, in order to prevent bushing is have an overview setting, an overview tab, which shows just command destroyers, right? Um, and that that is kind of a double-edged sword in that on the one hand, it'll tell you the moment that a command desi lands on you and so you can call out to fc you know lodge is about to get boosted and then even like broadcast target the boosh so that the fc can call it a primary on the other hand it means that you can't look at your overview for yellow boxes so you have to look at be looking at space in order to see whether when the uh, hostile fleet yellow boxes you so it's a trade-off and it's up to you you know how you want to do it uh, but it's an option all of the most popular overviews have that setting, that tab, so it shouldn't be too hard to set it up as, a, as an option. So if we don't have any questions about those ones, then I, I might just move on relatively quickly to managing reps. Um, now, as I said before, I see this as a kind of fourth priority to communication, positioning, and maintaining the cap chain. So only do this if you've ticked off the first three fully and you're comfortable that your position is good, your cap chain is good and you're communicating well. But if you have extra time, managing the reps of the logic wing can increase your, effective, your effectiveness a lot. So a few of the situations where you might um, manage reps, or rather I'll backtrack a little bit. So the, the objective of managing reps is to use the fewest possible number of rep modules to hold reps on a target. And the reason that we want the fewest number is that having three rep modules allows you to give reps to new broadcasts as quickly as possible. 
it maximizes your available capacitor and also it gives you information about the incoming damage, right? So if you use all of your reps on every single broadcast and you're holding, you don't know whether you're holding just enough to not die or whether you have like 80% of buffer room to play with. So it's hard to make decisions. Whereas if you use the minimum number required to hold reps, you know that you have the potential to increase your ripping power by, you know, 20%, 50% um, or whatever, right? So that gives you more information, more information is good. So some of the commands that you might give are firstly, how many reppers to use on new broadcasts. So generally in an Osprey, you have five reppers, right? So you might give the command to only use three on new broadcasts and four. Oh, is it four only? Oh yeah, four Five and one, of course. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so you might say, you know, only use two or only use three on new broadcasts, and you'd use this basically when you have already given reps to a few ships and you're holding fine, and so you want to try to keep a few reppers available to lock up new broadcasts or to be able to increase your repping power if you needed it on a particular ship. So. You'd do that, you know, if you're a couple of minutes into the fight and just say to your Logi Wing, hey guys, only put three reppers on your broadcast, please. Keep one open, something like that. The other thing that you might do is ask your Logi Wing to keep a repper on a particular ship. So you might say, keep one repper on the Hugin of Blah. Uh, and you would use that, say, when uh, a, a, an important ship has taken a bunch of armor or structure damage and you want to make sure that they get reps as soon as they get primary again because they have less buffer and so they're easy to kill right um, only do that though if you're holding fine without that repper you don't want to be hemorrhaging uh, ships just to keep a repper on this one human that we want to live you know the other thing that you might do is uh, call for all reps on a particular target. So you might just say, Logi, put all your reppers on Gabriel and the Scorpion, you know? Yeah, no worries, Doromius, uh, thanks for joining us. You might say, put all your reppers on Gabriel and the Scorpion. Uh, you'd use this when, particularly when there was a bunch of broadcasts coming in quickly and you need to select the ship that either is actually taking damage because say the hostile fleet yellow boxed a bunch of our friendly ships but only a primary one of them you need to make sure that the logic wing needs to know that they know which one is getting primary to put all reppers on that one right the other thing the other reason that you might do this is if there's a bunch of ships in your fleet that are taking damage but you want to prioritize one right so let's say that you get three hurricanes and a vulture that are taking damage and they and and you see that they're all getting reps you know kind of spread out a few of those ships are going to die you just can't hold all of them so you need to prioritize the vulture pound for pound the vulture is worth more to the fleet than a hurricane so you might want to say put all your reps on dust it in the vulture right um Another thing that you might say is to put heat on a particular person. So only use this when you're at the edge of holding and you just need a little bit of extra wrapping power in order to hold fine. So generally you'll do this on important ships as well, but it could be anyone. You know, say uh, a Lachesis is taking damage, they're, they're bleeding a little bit of armor, they're bleeding a little bit of structure. You'll say all wrappers on the Lachesis of Futa, um, put heat on all of your reppers two cycles and see if that holds. And lastly, probably the, the, the last thing that you might do in order to manage reps is to call people to decycle their reps. So this happens um, a lot, actually, probably this is the one that you might use the most out of other than like all reps on X is when, when there's a single friendly ship taking damage and you're using all of your reppers on that ship and suddenly that ship is no longer taking damage, you want to tell everyone, decycle your reps, be ready for a new broadcast because what's probably going to happen is they've taken all of their damage off of that ship in order to primary another ship 
and if we have all of our repers cycling on this guy that's not taking any damage, it's just going to take us longer to give reps to the next guy, which means that they might die. Yeah, so you you'll call to decycle your reps, be ready for a new broadcast, and that way we can give reps immediately. So that's that's kind of all that I'll say about managing reps. Are there any questions about that? Sweet. Don't know whether I'm boring you guys with too much information or just being comprehensive enough, um, but that's basically managing reps. Um, and look, and that, that, that's basically the, the core of the lesson, which is how to communicate with the FC, with the Lodgy Wing and the fleet, how to position using three different methods, um, how to maintain the cap chain and give commands to your Lodgy Wing on that, and how to manage your reps. Now, the last thing that I have is kind of like tips and tricks, how to set up your UI, how to delegate tasks and so on. But are there any questions at all about anything that we've covered so far? I had Just one a quick other question. Oh, yeah. go ahead. No, no, go, go, go ahead, boy. Yeah. Uh, so, with positioning, if the FC, the the DPS anchor, calls for prop mod on for DPS, to keep position correct, should Logi also prop mod on? Yeah, generally, generally, if the FC. Uh, has prop mod on, then you will want to turn it on as well, uh, just because you'll generally be at your maximal, uh, maximum optimal. So any drastic changes in the position of the friendly fleet is going to require a drastic change in yours as well. Um, that's that's a good question. I never mentioned actually how to command prop mod changes, but basically what you want to do is one of two things: either tell people to turn prop mod on, uh, and then turn prop mod off. So you'll just say, turn prop mod on, and then when you're in the position that you're happy to stay in, just call for prop mod off at that time, or just call how many cycles. I find that most people don't actually follow this properly. So in initial anchoring, I'll say something like, anchor up on me, prop mod's on two cycles to try to get range on the fleet, and then five minutes later, half of the Lodgy still have their prop mod's on which is a bit annoying because you get bumped and so on. But um, it can it can be useful, I suppose, if you want to just adjust a little bit, prop mods on one cycle, and then just confirm prop mods off when you, when you need it. You'll definitely yeah, always right, yeah, want you. to turn prop mods on when you're initially anchoring because pulling range quickly is important. And Gorgoroth cool, had a thank question. You. Oh, sorry, Boyd, you had a question. No, that, that was me. No, yeah, I think, I had, a, yeah. A, yeah, just regarding positioning, it was, uh, at a structure bash, we were trying to prevent uh, or mitigate bomb damage, so the whole fleet was just orbiting at 20k, uh, the FC. Should the Logi do that as well, or is it more important to stay grouped up on the Logi anchor? So that's a good question. Um, don't spread out your Logi. Um, there are very few situations where you'll want to spread the Logi, and basically they're not even worth mentioning. Um, in situations like the one that you mentioned, what often also happens is there'll be a bubble up on the FC, right? And what you're trying to do yes, is... Yes, there was. Yeah, exactly. So you'll want to have a bubble up and everyone orbiting at the very edge of the bubble so that any bombers that come in get decloaked. Now, in that situation, as Logi, I would burn 30k away from the FC. I would sit there and I would make sure that I'm out of the bubbles. Generally, even in a situation where the main fleet stays inside of bubbles, you'll want the Logi Wing out of the bubbles. Um, just your your survivability is more important, basically, than you know, decloaking a bomber or whatever. Um, so yeah, always ball up the Logi, don't spread them out, and uh, keep them out of bubbles whenever possible. All right, so there's a link in fleet chat now. Just open that up. And you'll see a few critical bits of information in this screenshot. So number one, if you look at the top right corner, you'll see that I have my watch list, my broadcast window, my locked targets, and my overview all together, right? So that I can look mostly at the broadcast window and at the locked targets while still maintaining peripheral view of the overview 
and the watch list so that if there's incoming damage on a watch list member and they have a broadcast which happens you know if, say that it's an fc they might not have time to broadcast for shield because they're paying attention to other things you'll see it and so you lock them up you announce to the logi wing lock up blah 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 give them reps and that way you don't have to wait for a broadcast because you weren't you because you didn't have the watch list nearby likewise with the overview most of the time you're not going to want to be looking at it because there's not really a lot of information there but if you suddenly get yellow boxed you'll see enough of a change in the icons that hopefully your eye gets drawn to it quickly and you broadcast for shield right if you had a command desi overview only then it's pretty obvious because you'll you'll have no entries in your overview and then suddenly you have a red appear at short range so at that point you want to very quickly say to fc you know lodge is about to get boosted and broadcast you know uh, broadcast the the target and then the other crucial bit of information is that I have the fleet chat open and I have Panfam Logi open and I have the cap chain channel open. So I think a lot of people just have one or two in some cases. As Logi Anchor, I like to keep all three and sometimes peek into the other cap chain channel as well to make sure that I'm communicating with all the Logi all at the same time so that if we have a lot of people dying or if there's a lot of people in Logi that aren't in the cap chain or if I need to change watch lists quickly for whatever reason I'm not just doing it to my cap chain I'm doing it to all the logic at the same time likewise having the fleet chart window open means that I can get communications from the broader fleet without having to tab out um, you know if there's uh, uh, like new watch list member or if there's a warp in or if you know, uh, the other thing that it's really helpful is if you see a lot of minus ones, but no one is dying, um, as far as you can tell, you need at that point to remind the fleet to broadcast and to broadcast early. This happens all the time. We'll be locking up hurricanes, giving them reps, and the world is fine. You know, like we're holding fine, I see, don't worry about it. Meantime, in fleet chat, it's like minus one hurricane, minus one hurricane, minus one hurricane. And it's like, okay. Clearly, we're holding fine if people broadcast, but people aren't broadcasting. So number one priority, communicate. You use your shout key and you say, guys, you need to broadcast as soon as you get yellow boxed. We're losing some canes because you're not broadcasting properly. Does that kind of make sense? When you're Logi Anchor, are you responsible for the horror drones as well? Or do you just let people do whatever they want with them? Do whatever they want. Uh, if I'm feeling charitable, uh, <laughs> what I would say is before we undock or while it's really quiet in the fleet is pick someone that you know is going to be applying damage in the main fleet relatively well so generally a secondary uh, fc or a support ship like a hugan or a lachesis and you tell people hey guys if you want to use your whole drones um, assist them to that person so let's say that like Boyd was in a Lachesis, I'd say, hey guys, if you want to use your whole drones, don't do it through broadcast for targets, just launch them, right click them, and assist them to Boyd, Reed, and the Lachesis. Um, that way, you know, people get on kill mails, which is nice, but really more importantly, you're ensuring that your Logi Wing isn't going to be scrambling to get on kill mails, but they're going to be spending their attention on actually repping people. But I wouldn't do it in the middle of a fight, no way. It's just a zeroth priority, you know, it's not important. Oh, sorry, Jordan, I didn't see your question. Um, what about speed change? I remember the Logi Anchor sometimes turn their max speed down by five meters. Yeah, it, it it's not a bad idea, yeah. So, particularly if you have good skills, uh, I mean, like, just sp skills you'll be faster than a lot of the people that are in flying particularly in t1 ships so you don't want them to go too far away keeping the logic together is more important than having like max speed and sonicking around so yeah if you find that people are dragging behind you a lot and by a lot i mean 10k or more then you can turn down your speed a little bit Uh, okay, another tip and trick is really more than a tip, but more 
something that you are going to have to do, which is delegating tasks. And this is particularly as you're just starting out, you're not going to be able to do every single part of the logi anchoring job perfectly. And you shouldn't feel bad delegating some of the tasks to someone else. The generally I will delegate in reverse order of priority, right? So if my first priority is communicating, then maintaining cap chain, then positioning, then managing reps, the first thing that I'll delegate is managing the reps. And the way that I do that is by kind of crowdsourcing it. And what I'll say is, guys, I'm not going to be able to lock up targets. You need to tell me if anything dies and tell me what ship they're in, right? And that way, uh, if we lose a ship, if we're not holding, I don't need to be on top of all the broadcasts. They'll just tell me. The logging room will just shout out to me and say, we lost a cane, we lost a Osprey, we lost whatever. And then I can decide whether I shout that up to FC or not. Um, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Sweet. I, I do that fairly often. You shouldn't feel bad about it. It's not like a sign that you're a bad anchor or whatever. If anything, it's a sign that you're a really good anchor because you know what your priorities are. And locking up broadcast is really not your main priority. Um, then, you know, again, following reverse order of priority, the next thing that you might um, delegate is positioning. So if you're new and you're not comfortable with your manual piloting, you might say, hey guys, I'm going to logic command. I'm, I'm going to do like logic commander, but is I'm still working on my manual piloting. Is there anyone that's happy to anchor for us? And then they just anchor. No big deal. You know, like um, you have fewer things to worry about. Someone else gets practice in the anchoring. And overall, you're going to do a better job than if you try to do everything. So don't feel bad in delegating things. Um, I think it's it's a skill that more people should should pick up on. Are you for like any questions, comments, anything like that that people want to ask? If not, then I'm basically going to wrap it up there. Uh, there will be a video of this with a presentation as well uh, that's going to be up on the Horde Flight School soon-ish. So if you missed part of it or if you want to rewatch it, it'll be there. Uh, and feel free at any point to hit me up on Discord or in game with any questions, comments. Um, like I'm, I'm basically at your disposal to help you improve as a logic anchor.